Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio, information, and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Visit audible.com slash twist for your free audiobook. And by Mandrail, the best way to send transactional email from the people who make MailChimp. Sign up today at mandrail.com. And by Amazon Web Services, get the resources you need to easily get started with AWS Activate, a new global program for startups, including AWS credits, training, developer support, a startup community forum, and special offers from third parties. Learn more and sign up at aws.amazon.com slash activate. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calcanis. And this is This Week in Startups. I've lost my voice, but don't worry. I've got three very vocal people on the program today. Molly Wood, Sarah Lacey, Paul Carr. It's going to be an amazing episode. Uber's numbers were leaked. Elon Musk made it to space again. Uh, and Bitcoin has either gone up or down $400. Stick with us. It's going to be an amazing episode. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, shit. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't going to live like me. Until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, ah, uh, yes. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this week in startups. Uh, we're live on the air. Is that correct, Brandis? Okay, we are live on the air, uh, and this is This Week in Startups, the show where we talk about the internet, technology, startups, entrepreneurship, and all that great stuff, and we're here at WeWork, uh, Golden Gate, which is in the middle of um, that really improving area of San Francisco, where Twitter is. Uh, what's this place called? This the is the Tenderloin. Mid-market. It's Mid-market. The oh, right. Part. Fucking and, Tenderloin. And it's like a block away. Right. There you go. Uh, and so with me, and thank you to WeWork for building me a studio and Mid-market. an office and everything. You guys are so great to me. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, hey, on the program today. That was uh, totally genuine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's really <laughs> sincere. No, thank you for building me this awesome studio, WeWork. No, it's a great place to work, like 500 bucks a desk, and you don't have to have any commitment, all that stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, I have good coffee. On the program today, uh, journalist Molly Wood is with us. How are you, Molly? I'm great, Jason. You're How on you? hiatus. I am on hiatus, yeah. You left CNET. I left CNET. After a decade? How long were you 13 years. More than a decade, I, I think. Know, ridiculous. I know that is a long time. Three years more than why, a decade. Didn't, why didn't you leave before? It's so rare to find a journalist who's at one place that long. I think it's because I did almost every editorial mm-hmm. job that you can do at CNET. So yeah. I went from writer to, you know, from reviewer to opinion writer to podcaster to video to, you know. So, and then when I tapped them all out, I was like, okay. I'm done. <laughs> I did them all. It was I don't want to be anybody's boss, so I'm out of here. Yeah, uh, and then also uh, co-hosting the program with me, of course, is Sarah Lindsay, <laughs> the editor of Pando Daily, who just got off a triumphant uh, interview with Dick Costa last night. I saw him at the Battery, mm-hmm. and he was like, yeah, I just got done with three hours with Sarah Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was like, wait till she interviews you. Yeah. It's like, it's just, <laughs> hey, oh, Ooh. oh, God, it's just like, uh, we did a two and a half hour interview, but how was the Dick Costello interview? It was great. Um, we, you know... You can tell he it is his first interview post IPO. I mean, he had to be very controlled about certain things. So the beginning ah. of the interview, we were talking about his time in Chicago and you know doing improv and all that. Like he's very jokey and loose. We're talking about early days of Twitter. It's like slightly more jokey and loose, and then it's like a lot of you know questions about how things are you know going now, and it's you know you know a little bit more controlled. But like you know, Dick is one of those few people who, in personal interactions when we're not on stage, has not changed at all. Right. As a result, I mean, and, and, and most people have to, you know, they have yeah. to at some level have Become more security more guarded. or be more guarded or have a bigger filter. But like, I mean, I'll sit down, regulate breakfast with Dick and he'll just be like, this is just between two girls. Right. And he'll like just go off on everyone in the industry. And like, yeah. he's amazing. He keeps it real. Yeah. When does this so, interview come out? Uh, it should be up later today. Oh, okay, so this will be the Dick Costello day at Pando Daily, like you had the Jason <laughs> yeah, Calacanis day. Been, yeah. Yes, yes. That was so hard with you because you had so many great little sound bites that, like, I just knew would be great. And I was like, we really have like forty pictures of Jason on the site, but I have to put up the thing about Mark Cuban. Like, it just was one after the other, sound by machine, uh, and then of course Paul Carr coming after his victory lap. Not yep. safe for work. Corporation being acquired by Pando Daily. Yeah. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So we had a disagreement about your tweet. You tweeted something like, a week after Paul sold not uh, 
it's 10 times more relevant. And he thought you were saying that like, you're an idiot for selling. I thought you were saying, oh look, this combination made the deal Yeah, you stronger. said after selling, pa- uh, week after selling not safe word to Pando, uh, it's 10 times more relevant. I meant Pando is 10 times more relevant. Well, that's not what either of us. Oh. No, that is, I thought you meant both. One no, or no, both. I meant, yeah. that was a compliment to Paul. And that's it was- That's nice, thanks Jason. Uh, maybe, it wasn't really a dig to you, Sarah. It was, wow, we, you're, you're talking about a very big national issue well, I think, I with think the Pierre Omidyar story, yeah. which is something that leveled up Panda. Nationally relevant, relevant outside of the world of tech, I think would right. be a fair comment, but I right. think... Which uh, is 10 times more relevant. Yeah. yeah. I think we all became 10 times more relevant. That I mean, day. you got Glenn Gr- Greenwald yeah. to respond to a In post on... 5,000 words. <laughs> Glenn Greenwald to responds yeah. to everything, let's be clear. Sometimes Not like he's that. responding no. to this show right now. There are 7,000 words coming brought him up yet. in response to well, just mentioning it, his I name. I think it was what prompted him to respond, which was yeah. so interesting. The level of people who were talking about the it. The fact that he had no choice but to respond was very telling. And it's telling about the Panda audience because he managed to avoid responding when it was a not safe for work. And Pierre's been responding on the square as well. He's been doing lots of like Huffington Post op-eds about journalistic independence and... Piers Morgan? Uh, no, Pierre Omidia. Oh, Pierre Omidia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's been... Because he's been not responding but then writing all these op-eds which just so happen to address all the points. So... And well, that's the all the Panda was, audience. Just for people who are in the audience who don't know, um, who's that writer you have who's Mark really... Ames. Mark Ames. Mark Ames. He's pretty good. Um, he's very good. Yeah, he's pretty good. I like that kid. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> he's got a big future ahead of him. He's going to go places. He's going places. Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, Russia. Yeah, see? Um, but he... Um, oh, we're going to get the voice again. Exactly. <laughs> Jason, I'm, 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 I love it. I've lost control of the show. Yeah, no, you're going to go first. You're going to go fucking. But in the story, he was saying mm-hmm. that Pierre Omidyar mm-hmm. had privatized and bought the leaks yes. from Snowden. Now, well, no, he's saying he's privatized and bought the leaks from <clears throat> Greenwald. From Greenwald. Greenwald had privatized and sold Snowden's leaks to Pierre. Precisely. Because now, he had monopolized them by, by being the was, only one who had them. Right. And he wouldn't share them with The Guardian. He didn't do what Julian Assange did and share them with other media outlets. He said... Well, Julian oh, Assange also shared it with everybody en masse, which whether was a they huge liked mistake. It or not. Yeah. yeah. No, he... Kind of uh, not a great thing. He... No, the, the, we can all agree on that. But the point is... The approach, the thing that, and I'm not a fan of Assange, but the thing Assange did that was smart was he went to The Guardian and said, we will, yeah, but he said, we will share every document with The Guardian so that we have the combined resources, and they had David right. Lee, who's an amazing investigative reporter working on it. Um, Glenn said, no, only me and my sidekick, Laura, are going to have the, are going to have these okay. documents. We're not going to share them with The Washington Post. We're not going to share them with The Guardian. We will decide what's relevant, and when we have a document we decide is relevant, then we will share it. And so Mark's position is, if you are therefore monopolizing these secrets which we're told are supposed to be the public, you know, the, the position of Snowden and Greenwald was, these should be out in the public. So if you're saying, no, we'll decide what goes out to the public and what doesn't, first of all, you're not really doing much more than the NSA does because the government decides what we know and what we don't know. So Greenwald's going, no, trust me, I'm going to decide now. Right. Meanwhile, he sells a book and then says it will contain previously unpublished secrets. At this point, you're just shilling. You're just basically you're milking, milking mm-hmm. public secrets. What do secrets. you think, Molly? you think this is selling them or do you think it's wrong, do you think it's wrong that Glenn is starting a commercial venture off of the back of the leaks? I think that that... It, that takes it firmly out of the territory of whistleblowing and puts it firmly in the territory of money making. Yeah. Right. And so everybody in this room is in the business of money making when it comes to content. Right. That in itself is not an evil thing to do right. to try to make money off of content. Right. But don't act like you're in the business of protecting the greater good because frankly at that point I would prefer the the Assange approach. Yeah. Like Bob Woodward did the same thing. Remember he put right. out that book and there were the things that he had redacted. I can't even remember on what topic, but he had held back information that people felt like, look, that's in the public good and you yeah. kept hold yeah. of it so that but you the could sell more. But the difference is with him, there were checks and balances. Because the, the thing with Woodward is he shared a huge amount of stuff with, with his editors at the Washington Post. And the thing with Greenwald is he is the editor, the publisher, the right, journalist. Right, right, right. He's, yeah. He is everything. He's, 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 he's Kevin Graham. He's Kevin Graham, Graham and yeah. Bob Woodward and yeah. Paul Bernstein, all in one guy. Do you think Pierre Omidyar has nefarious intent in this uh, operation. You mean he's an NSA agent? Totally. <laughs> 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 but like, do you think like you, you sort of? I, I felt like Mark's piece was like that. It was unfair to say he sold the leaks to him because I'm not. I don't know that. We he, don't know yet that he's going to share the whole cash even with Pierre Omidyar. Right. He did, however, say the 250 million dollars, a quarter of a billion dollars, which is the budget that he that he got from Omidyar. 25 Omidia, million for 10 years was an offer that he could not refuse. Now, when you start talking about money being an offer, money making you make decisions. <clears throat> 
I don't know what he gets from what he gives to Emilio at that point. He basically says, "I can't resist what Pierre Emilio asks me because he has all this what money." What do you think, Sarah? I mean, you're 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 like can maybe be the arbiter here. Like, is he is he is Pierre in this for personal glory, justice in the world? Mm-hmm. To what is it to make money? Obviously not. I think Pierre has really good intentions, and mm-hmm. Paul and I have debated this a lot over the last couple of weeks. I mean, I know Pierre somewhat. I've interviewed him a few times. I've spent some time with him. I think he doesn't, sometimes he can be naive. He doesn't always make the best decisions. Certainly some of his stuff with, um, and, you know, investing in, you know, microloans and in, you know, other parts of the world have not always turned out well. But then again, I think, look, he's a guy who's giving away 90% of what he made from eBay and he genuinely wants to make the world a better place. Right. And he genuinely thinks news is broken. So was this article fair when it said it was selling them to Pierre, do you think? Because you published the article. Well, it was. It was selling them to Pierre. I mean, people But Pierre tried... doesn't have them. We don't know that Pierre has but, them. But Pierre I is... He is, giving, he is giving Pierre the value contained in those documents and here's called the thing. Not selling him for a full-profit enterprise. But here's the thing. He doesn't, selling means he possesses them now. It's not clear right. that Pierre possesses okay, them. Okay, yes. That's the problem I have with the story. But, I know it's semantics, but words matter, Paul. But, but this is also important, Jason, because a lot of people came out and said, oh, and I don't know why Pierre... Peter Thiel and Pierre are considered <clears throat> interchangeable. It's like billionaire Liber- trading cards. It's billionaire but people come trading out and they're cards. like, oh, but you're funded by Peter Thiel. And it's like, okay, there's a difference with someone investing in a company and, but you know, not having fund. a but not having a board seat, not really being an active investor at all. And Pierre is the editor in chief of this. He has an Pierre operating yeah, he called role up Greenwald and Hyatt. Wait, he's calling himself the editor in chief. No, no. He's, so here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he's calling himself. He's oh. acting as the editor in chief. But here's what he definitely did do, which. Founders Fund definitely didn't do with Pando is is Pierre called up Greenwald and said I want to hire you you are the guy I want to run this thing right he made the recruitment decision but at that point he's operational at that role. point he is the editor he is functionally the, the editor in chief yeah if he, he can the fire pub- Greenwald publisher all right fine it doesn't matter the, mm-hmm. he owns he owns the he owns Glenn Greenwald at all this right, point Molly, but Ken is it in Greenwald's content thing? contract can Greenwald say I prefer not to publish these documents well this yet. is the good this is a good like, question I'll, and I'll, we've well, asked does him does he retain and we've asked him and yeah. David Sorota over who, the dissemination well this is a good question and it's a question that we've asked we've asked him numerous questions and all he keeps saying is I'm not going to respond to questions and then he says people who even asking those questions says more about the person asking it than oh, it I does me and literally. you go yeah. did you use that when you were an attorney did you go the fact the jury wonders whether my client is guilty says more about them than it does about me yeah. like, go, when well, is that also, ever yeah. a legitimate if, form and of here's debate? the thing like I don't take a moral judgment on the like profiteering aspect. I think, like you said, and Molly, we all do this for a living. My issue is sort of this hypocrisy and like playing fast and loose with with the rhetoric. Like Hold if you're saying, is. if you're mm-hmm. saying that you know these documents belong to the public, but then you're keeping them and only you see them, yeah. and then you do a deal for this much money and you still won't yeah. answer these questions. Well, then you're not acting in the public interest. Right, you're how, just not, Molly. How, if you were, uh, if you got to wave a magic wand and you know, decide how these leaks would be used, um, what would you do? I actually want to see them all. <clears throat> I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about Assange and, and that maybe it was a mistake to put everything out there, but but no, I want to see them. I disagree I find on it, that, And I feel way. like no. I can't... I'm not comfortable with the reporting, knowing the way that Greenwald has handled it since. I can't. I have no way to check the mm-hmm. facts. He's only released some of the documents and not so all. So you don't trust Glenn? I, I'm not sure that I trust him anymore. No. On a scale of one to, to be ten, honest, on I trust him. On a scale of one to ten, how trustworthy is he? Is he? He's a three for me. Really? I trust him. He's given us no reason. No, he's given scale us no reason. Scale of one to ten. No, here's the thing. He's given us no Negative reason. 20. He's given us no reason to trust him, and we've asked him questions. And the simple question he will not answer is: I said to him, "Will you guarantee right here and now, as we have done about Peter Thiel or any other of our investors, will you guarantee?" Simply that you will cover Pierre Omidyar the same way as you would cover anyone else. Simple question. Right. It's an obvious yes. And he said, I'm not getting, I'm not getting into discussing Pierre Omidyar. Then frankly, fuck you at that point. So you know I, you're a zero. That means to me that he's scared of the money being pulled. Absolutely. I so you're a zero. Closed. So I think what you've mm. done, credit to you guys, uh, you know, rest in peace, not safe for work daily, but along with <laughs> Pando. Um, <laughs> credit to you guys because you are forcing the issue before the deal's done when it could have an impact. Like, you know, Midiar might say right now, F this, I'm out, this is too much trouble. But equally, Glenn might say, as, as Sorota, as <clears throat> David Sorota, who's one of our writers, asked him to say, is Glenn might say, you know what, I want written into my contract some clause about editorial independence. Yes. And we've asked about that, and another thing is he said, no, one final thing on Omidyar, though, I want to say, I, I don't think Pierre Omidyar thinks he's doing anything bad. Mm-hmm. I think Pierre Omidyar thinks the government is evil. I don't think he's doing anything bad. No, either. no, I think he thinks the government is evil. We're going to go off the government, blah, blah, blah. 
but I think when you're asking the question, are you going to go about, again um, after business and including yourself in the same way? He sees that as an irrelevance. He sees it as no, we're going after the government. It, he, it doesn't occur Not to him. Not that these two well, things are. He thinks that because he's level. doing this unquestioning good in his mind of exposing government corruption, everything else he does in the service of that is no one else's business. This is so important, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's in situations like that that real bad shit happens. Well, and that is the problem with the vanity play around media right now. That right. everybody, that, you know, the problem with the cult of personality around media, whether it's Bezos buying the Washington Post yeah. or Omid Yar feeling like, you know what, news is broken, so I'll fix it. Yeah. Right. Like, I'll just make my own news. It's like, yeah. you know what? News but, isn't that broken. In fact, I trust Greenwald a hell of a lot more at The Guardian, which is owned by yep. a trust and has right. no corporate interest yeah. whatsoever mm -hmm. than I do under Omid Yar's like, weird, giant, baseball contract kind of offer well, that other, I can't refuse. What is that? Because we know what the motivation is. News. We know what The Guardian's motivation is. It's to continue the funding the Scott tr continue the being funded by the Scott yeah. Trust and continue to exist. That's it. Yeah. No, one, no one gets Make rich. a better world. Okay, yeah. when we get back from this commercial break, we will talk about Uber's leaked <laughs> revenue numbers when we get back. One of Paul's favorite people, Travis. Okay, listen. Mandrill, Mandrill. <laughs> oh, I love the commercial, right? I gotta do a commercial. <laughs> Mandrill is so happy just seemed, like, and he psyched against himself the up a little more and he was like, like, oh, God. And he's like, it's on its feet go with time. time. <laughs> All right, Mandrill go is on, a type Mandrill. <laughs> Can we do you the metal chip noise? He did like the little shack, like shoulder wiggles. He did, like he did. Head. He, he was mighty. like, someone gave him a massage, put a cold towel around yeah. his neck. Go on, go on, Jason, you're doing it. You guys go have on. no sympathy for a man who's Go time. Voice. Come on. Get yourself some honey. Come on. <laughs> Fuck you, Paul. You're just calm. <laughs> no, get yourself some. Oh, yeah, get yourself a comrade. Mandrill app, yes. Transactional email from our friends at Mailchimp. Hey. Here we go. I got this, baby. Service all over the world. Real-time delivery is instant. Amazing real-time analytics and a mobile app for iOS and Android where you can monitor performance, troubleshoot issues from anywhere. They're literally rolling out new features every single week, Paul. Jesus. A, B, split tasting. fire. Super easy to get started. We use it for all of our transactional emails here at launch, and so we can tell our audience with full certainty that you will have a great experience. Hey, pricing, 12,000 emails a month are always free? Good what? Lord. <laughs> and after that, you pay just based on usage. There's no feature gaining. All features are available to all users. Go ahead and sign up at mandrill.com. Thank you, at Mandrill app <laughs> on Twitter. Yes, just think of a man and a drill, M-A-N-D-R-I-L-L -L app on Twitter. Mandrill, it's now a type of monkey. Now you made it sound gross. I want to stop talking about Mandrill. I'm not comfortable at all with the Mandrill drill. Don't go to Mandrill.com. I wonder what we'll find there. I bet it's email software. Unsee the man and the drill. God almighty. How's the show going so far? Yeah, <laughs> people are the worst. Okay, listen, I love you, and you're never invited back. Listen, you said that last time. I did say that last time. It's a rating bonanza. <laughs> a rating bonanza. Okay, bonanza. listen, Uber. Bonanza. bonanza. Okay, listen, Uber's revenue numbers have been leaked to Paul's favorite site, Valleywag. Uh, and Sarah's favorite site, being the free market monster that she is. Uh, they leaked financial... <laughs> you call it free market monster? That's a different monster. thing. Oh, the I think like the monsters. It's like the monsters. <laughs> Listen, the company is making, Lily. according yeah. to this leak, free $1 billion dollars a year in gross bookings. Rough calculation shows the company is on track to make $213 million in 2013. 11% revenue growth in like a couple of weeks. 400,000 new sign-ups 400,000 new sign-ups over the five-week period and Uber says they will take action against Valleywag and the leaker Molly, what do you think Uber on fire 20 million dollars a week? I don't know what they're so mad about I, I'm pretty happy about it. Actually. Yeah, I, was, so I know have you met Travis? Yeah, yeah, what is Travis or something so like, mad oh, about? No, no, I have <laughs> He's no love for, I have this weird feeling about Uber where I have used it because it has saved my actual life at the freaking Javits Center in New York City when it's raining. Like, you right. could die down there and Uber yeah. will come. Yeah. On the other hand, like, my whole life rule is don't be a dick. And that guy is just a dick. Yeah. No, yeah. Travis is there yes, is something he is. Yes, he Full disclosure. Jason, full disclosure. Jason, I am going to go off to the leakers with the full that. power of my Uber. He would say that. It's he so, would say that. And it's I mean, so mercenary. And you just uh, never yeah. know when you're going to Oh, it's like two times pricing today because it's Tuesday. Because Travis is, is No, it's the get. They give all that money to the truck. I'm listening. Full disclosure, I'm an angel investor in it. I'm thrilled. Yeah. And I'm with Travis for two decades. He's a great guy. But seriously, let's. He's a great guy. He is a great guy. That. Absolutely, 100%. you would you would stand by that. Absolutely, he's you, a great entrepreneur. I think they're, they're, I'll say that. I think being, he's a great guy. Absolutely, I don't know him personally at all. I will say for as a decades. company, I find them you guys are too hard on him. I don't know what the beef is. I mean, for a free market monster and then a recovering alcoholic, <laughs> what is your what are you? What's the problem here? <laughs> Please say something about Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Molly. Totally. I don't like bring it. I got nothing. 
<laughs> no, that's our inside joke, obviously. I used, uh, to be fr- I used to be friends with him. I've known him yeah. for a long time, I've too. I've never been friends sure with him. He's fine. a horrible just human being. No, he's not. You've never met him. He's, he's a bad person. I've never met him. You're absolutely right. I've we'll never have, we'll have dinner. You'll learn like to look. Yeah, we'll like the drive. We will not show up for dinner. But I did find it interesting, and I wondered I wondered if he actually is behind this and wanted it out, because why would you confirm it? Um... With a weird if he was out. so angry, why would he come out and basically confirm it? I think he confirmed it with all things D, and I, I, I think there's no way to... I don't have any information on this. I haven't talked to Travis in a couple of months, actually, but... I don't think there's any way to deny it. Here's how you deny dashboard. it. No, here's the statement you say. You say, we don't comment on alleged leaks. We don't comment on any of our data. That's right. it. End of conversation. Well, you don't go as, you don't shake your fist and go, I will vow vengeance on whoever has done this to me, Travis Carter. That's what Elon Musk That's did a great when way they to leaked out of Tesla. He basically said, like, listen, we're going to go after the leakers of this stuff. You can't leak sensitive information like this. It's kind of a serious issue for companies. Yeah, but it's not the right way to approach it. If I... I a, if you don't want to confirm it, that's a terrible And didn't Evan way. Williams do that when the Twitter leaks happened? I mean, he he was they were pretty upset about when the Twitter leaks. When they personal email. But you can totally have like yeah. a really professional statement that says, I'm yeah. not confirming or denying anything that is in this information. However, I can tell you if leaks are coming from our company, we will right, track them we'll down. The way he does it. String he them up tantrum. and blah, blah, blah. Right, I mean, yeah, he's the first or last We're speaking about how to handle the leak. But what about what's in the leak? I mean, it's fascinating. I, I mean, mean, it's no, I don't, but well, I, I'm not hugely surprised. No, I don't know why people are acting like we thought it was so much lower. I mean, Everybody They're obviously put killing it like, yeah. on track to basically become much bigger than Twitter in a very short period of time. Well, but it's a transactional company, so of course. I mean, Twitter yeah. has to like build a um, huge base of eyeballs enough that they can set their own ad rules and create a new product that the market has to adopt. I mean, that's a very lengthy, lengthy process. Right. I mean, everyone would rather have a business where people pay you money. Can I throw you out know, an idea? Versus trying to reinvent ads. Different, 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 different ways, ways idea. for How people to pay you money. Get surge pricing for tweets. When a celebrity dies, Ugh. you have to pay double the amount to tweet about it. That's it. <laughs> then that's how you make Twitter the size of Uber. Done. Exactly. So when Nelson Mandela dies, there it tweets is. go double in price. Sorry, we'll just suddenly tell you after the fact that I, it costs you $50 to tweet I that. think <clears throat> Uber has a lot of big risks to its business right now. I think a lot is breaking down in terms of... Um, in terms of ratings, in mm. terms of quality control of drivers, there are cases yep. where they're too aggressive mm. and they're kicking people off, and that's driving a lot of uh, behavior that's pressuring riders and setting up a weird dynamic in the right. car. Were they kicking riders off? By the or drivers? No, 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 drivers. Right. But like the drivers are getting really desperate because they're so worried about you know a bad review. There's people. T- Increasingly, people saying that they're your Uber pickup and the license plate's wrong. And so in some cases, the license plate just isn't updated. In some cases, they are the wrong car. I've never um, had that. I've, I've seen like, I've had that. I've, oh, I've had that. I've seen, yeah. I don't take Uber anymore, but I've in had last multiple weeks, friends tell me this is happening that's recently. Like been, that's a major thing yeah. that's happening. And then there's you know some issues with, um, you know, we reported on this case with assault issues and like, you know, there are you like letting these people in? It's, you know, been I, multiple I think allegations these are now. really, yeah. you know, Paul's objection to both Uber and Airbnb was um, because he's not a free market monster like me mm-hmm. is, you know, look, laws exist for a reason. We have to protect people. And right. like when you're saying, oh, trust us, we're the good guys. We'll make sure only good people right. are driving the these cars. We're right. starting to really see is that true at scale? And we're starting right. to see disturbing mm-hmm. things. So I think the next year is going to have these major come to Jesus you know, yeah, can we you, really what, trust Uber moments? And that's what will make or break the company and determine how big gets they get. huge and large, I mean, if you have 100,000 hotel rooms right. or 100,000 Airbnbs, somebody's going to trash a room at some point. Mm-hmm. But it's a safety right? so it's a issue what, that you don't have with a lot of other do, companies. They, but you have it with taxi companies. It was, that right. is yeah, inevitable. That's why we have no, it. Right. It was much worse right. than But they're regulated. Companies, right? But they're I mean, regulated. They're regulated, but you still have it. Yeah, I mean, you, you didn't know what route. You know, when you get to scale. I think all these services, Lyft, Sidecar, and Uber, have a much higher benchmark for like letting people into the service based on background checks than actually the... Well, the background checks aren't working. Although that yeah. said, yeah. I agree with you that Uber has a bunch of issues. I, I think mean, we're going to no see. I think they're growing pains the same yeah. way they're growing pains with any company growing this fast. I, I don't fault them for that, <clears throat> but we're going to really see the soul of this company and if the things they say are really what they live so it's over a, it's the big, next it's year. And I, I think and Travis it could be a, is the it could, Look, it could be a group Because public temper tantrums are not good. It could be a group Mercenary pricing is not good. It creates a bad feeling. Like, I don't feel like I can trust Uber as a company because I feel find them I find their behavior really? mercenary as a company. And their response is always, the what do you want pricing? me to say? Like, when, whenever there's something bad happening. I love the happens, surge pricing. When any, I love it, too, but yeah. it's mercenary. But whenever anything, it gets more people on the, more drivers on the road. They give that money directly oh. to the drivers. That's yeah, such but a, that's that's taking a, a drive, and the drivers are suing them, right? Aren't they, weren't the drivers suing them, saying that they weren't getting paid? 
I think there might have been something in Boston or something. I think like, there might have been a little something oh, no, about that. I remember that, reading something paid, in Boston like, where know, some people were organizing There's a big difference between Lyft and Uber. Lyft yeah. is a company people feel, feel an emotional connection with. Yeah. Uber is a mercenary <clears throat> transaction. And look, of the two, I take Uber. So I'm not putting a Uber's value better, judgment I mean, on that. Clearly. I don't want to get picked up in some like, douchey network. mustache car. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but, I don't want to talk to But them. people mm. do yeah. have an emotional <laughs> feeling with Lyft. They do not have with Uber. They mm-hmm. feel like it is a cold transaction. And at the end of the day, that is the kind of... Why you know people like Apple and not Microsoft? Yeah. All right, listen, Although I disagree, but like listen, I'm, I have no I mean. objectivity because I'm the guy's friend and I'm an investor in the company. So, there goes. My I think he's built an amazing business that's like transformed my life, and yeah. it's, it's a hard. It's you know, it's I think how a lot of people felt about Oracle. Like you know, obviously relational databases, huge impact in the world, did a lot of good, but people thought you know Larry was a horrible, horrible person, and it's like. You have these things every once in a while with entrepreneurs where someone who you would never set up on a blind date with any anyone you remotely cared about really? has built an amazing company. He's like, he's You'd really set nice Travis guy. up on a blind date. Sure. <laughs> but not least because he'd make her pay. With Maybe you should twice. Date him. <laughs> he'd be like, no, I'm sorry. That you have he'd to pay the bill, but I'll set Molly up on a date totally, with please do not. Oh, God, Molly. no. No, I'm good. I would actually <laughs> love to see that. No, I, I, I would like to single. see it just because you'd kill him. I think that would be amazing. like, That would make me so happy. You're also about three feet taller than him. Yeah. And then I would wear four and still Time is because. coming to the air. <laughs> they could be ready in four to five years, according to Jeff Bezos. Uh, play the video clip of. Um, Was this drones? This is the Amazon God, Air 60 Minutes nonsense. Let's play that. As you can see, uh, yeah, you put some stuff in a box and um, not to be. Please narrate right this. It's like on that show, Almost Human. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be a cynic, you put some stuff in a box, you put on a thing. The Go on, stuff goes in the box, and then yeah. the thing goes on the air, and the drone, and the drone takes it to your thing. Um, was it just marketing PR nonsense? Like, it came out the day before Black Monday, or whatever, the Cyber lunch. Monday. Yeah, this is like, not a launch. Yeah, this yeah, is I mean, supposedly it, it is 10, vaporware. And it only goes within <laughs> 10 vaporware. miles of a, of a, yeah. of a distribution center. It is a promotional center, video, so. yeah. It's, it, this you is, have to live basically next door to an Amazon factory for this to work. They just should have a pickup window. You know, if they're going to do it this. Reminds yeah. me of this that would be awesome. It reminds, Pneumatic tubes like the yeah. bang. That would, yes. Doesn't it? Yeah. It reminds that. me of the old Disney World where, like, it would be like World the of House tomorrow. of the Future. Yeah, the, the House oh, yeah. of the Future. <laughs> like, yeah. like, we will probably... This is like eating our food in pill form. I, I will like, say this. Thing it, to you. If you were scared that Google's cars going around doing the street view was sucking up our data. I can't wait till Jeff Bezos has an army of drones flying over our house. Right. Then yeah, we're talking really about a potential she's backlash. Like Sarah Lacey is drinking I'm another watching, latte. I'm watching what she's I know, reading I don't want over them to know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Send her a coupon. Right. But it will really improve your suggestions for buying. And yeah. Yes, I mean, it's going to be awesome. When we know and just yeah. following you around. Paul's wearing that same ratty same hoodie. old hoodie yep. again. <laughs> he needs a new hoodie. <laughs> Let's guilt him into a new hoodie. It almost feels like like Great. This. Uh, the drone is above you. Yeah. It's, it realizes you've been away like four weeks in a row. It just goes, hey, hey, that in your Google Glass. Glass. <laughs> I get it for you. I'll go get it. I'll go get it now. It just drops a box on your oh. shoulder. It's like, Paul, you, you do know you wore that yesterday. It's like Fahrenheit 451. It's like Gazoo from, from, from the Flintstones. Books. Hello, yeah. dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is a totally uncreepy idea. This is great. I'm so, I cannot wait till Bezos I love it because I just love all the weird shit Bezos does. I just love how he wants to take on everything in the world. Like, I, yeah. I love the theater of like watching Jeff Bezos. I am amazed. I have to say, reading the 60 Minutes Overtime link about this, oh, yeah. I am astonished that 60 Minutes producers and reporters walked into a room with Jeff Bezos, did not know what he was going to say, mm. and were just like, sure, we'll film your ad, Yeah, whatever it's for. Yeah, whatever for. it is. I mean, well, that's that part of blew getting my mind. Him. I mean, Steve yeah. Jobs did the same thing. He's like, yep. oh, I'm sorry, you want access? Great. Here's what I want, you know? Bezos um, is the new yeah, Steve Jobs. Yeah, but at least what, so at least what you Steve Jobs did was said, I will give you early access to my product and you'll know what the product is. Not like this big secret, like, I'm going to reveal a big secret thing about right. Amazon and we're going to, like, there's no way that you're not doing an ad for them. I mean, I, mean, I guess yeah. the, the only option is that you say to yourself in your heart of hearts, well, we could always not air it, which we all know is bullshit. Oh, you or you can to- be critical. I mean, I would absolutely show up and do it. And then you're like, you just, you know, you don't. You don't let him have final cut of the video. Right. But like, Did they let him have way... final cut of no, 50 minutes? No, I don't, no, no, I don't know. But like, but I mean, there is like a way a to... But commercial. Yeah. 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 Or you just and no matter what, it. even if you're going to be critical, you have to VO it yeah, later and the video they... is not as good and you've still got Charlie Rose like with his natural expression just being like, oh my God, flying thing. That was the yeah. weird thing. Yeah. Like, he was like, oh, this he was is like, uncomfortable. Oh, well, let me uh, show you, Charlie. Watch the video. I know. Yeah. And you know what they did? He never asked him about the working conditions of the Amazon workers and the complaining about that. Remember that whole thing? Of yeah. And that was such an easy, like, little snarky crack to just make. Like, yeah. oh, these guys aren't going to get mad about the working conditions, are they? Yeah, they're drones. And then, yeah. boom, you're in. Exactly. 
No. Yeah. Oh, he said that? No, no he, he, no, he no. should have. Like, it was just a softball. It was a softball. Any good journalist would have done. That's the thing. You can go in and you can say, okay, we don't know what, we're, what you're going to announce, but like, fuck it, you're Jeff Bezos and bring cameras. It's the way you be do prepared. it. It's not agreeing to do that or not agreeing to do it. If he called me, I would be like on the next fucking thing. Right. Oh, yeah. He that doesn't was do our, interviews. Uh, so yeah. it's a coup and sure, but that was our first of three. Are we doing another ad now? We are oh, going to do I another so. ad. Well, we just did that one for the No, that was the so. first of the three <laughs> Bing launches of the week. So that was our Bing launch of one of the first three Bing launches of the week. So we're going to hear the other two when I get back from commercial break. Uh, and um, hey, this is an easy commercial to do because it's because it's because it's because of Audible. Audible.com, yeah. my favorite service. I use it every day. I love uh, audiobooks. Because I get tired at the end of the day. I don't have time to read, and I can just listen to these audio books. Reading is hard. Bed. It is hard sometimes when you're tired at the end of the day. That should be the slogan, audible, because home. reading is hard. <clears throat> I will say, Jason be. and Molly and I, I all like have shopping. to read things like Good Night Moon over and over and over again. Oh, my again. God, yeah, yeah, Paul, just, just slow your roll. <laughs> I read Good Night Moon myself. We're, on, we're on to Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. So it's uh, the <laughs> Bernstein Bear, Scary Christmas is like, I have to read it two times at night. We're and on Scary spot Voice. Books. What's that? We're on Spot Books. Oh, God. Mm. Listen, anyway, <laughs> speaking of books, Audible, speaking Audible. Speaking of books, don't buy 150,000 titles in every genre. I love it. You can automatically sing it between your Audible, audiobook, and Kindle. 30-day trial is free with your book of the week. Go to audible.com slash twist and get the book of the week, audible.com slash twist. That's right. You get a free book. And you can send your confirmation to audible at launch.co and be entered in to win an iPad mini signed by me, Jason Calaganis. Wait, let's just stop for a second and analyze that competition. They get to win an iPad mini that you've put your name on. There are, you don't understand, Paul. <laughs> are you going to just write, I'm going to ruin the identity. You're going to ruin somebody's identity. I'm going to ruin somebody's identity. If you write on my iPad, iPad mini, you owe me a new <laughs> iPad mini. You'll punch me in the face. No, I just, that to no. me is vandalism. Is it going to be just people J. Cal? No. Are people going to go, I sign do you at Jason's? Do you full letters? No, at, you um, at Jason. People will think that Wow, he made it douchier than I thought. I know. Exactly. People will say to me, did you get that from Jason? Did you steal his iPad mini? And go, oh no, I won it. No, no, I put a little message. Like dear Paul. Oh, that's great. C- congratulations on the fire sale of your Congra- company. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on your app you hire. Good You're luck welcome. working for. Congratulations her. on knowing me and getting yeah. me to sign this for you. On. Congratulations <laughs> on getting me to write on your iPad. Do you think that adds to the value? Is my question. I guess. I'm I guess You're no, so I lucky that I I'm signed your iPad it. Mini like this. <laughs> I'm going to do it in a race. Let's both. do this as a test. I'm going to put an iPad Mini not signed by you, an iPad Mini <laughs> signed by you on eBay, and see in oh. two weeks which one. Guarantee mine goes oh, for over a thousand over. Thousand no. dollars Who are these? He freaks? has some weirdo fans. You do I have weirdo super fans. fans. This yeah. is the, the super Jason fans. Nation. They're not weirdo fans. Jason Nation's strong. It's a strong Jason. Really, people... I've heard it's under attack. <laughs> I've heard I've heard Sanctions. Jason Hershorn is trying to take <laughs> Jason over. Jason Hershorn is trying to do <laughs> a coup. Because yeah, I have Jason on Twitter. Listen, <laughs> the book I'm listening to right now is The Bully Pulpit, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and the Golden Age of Journalism. That's it's, a great uh, book. It's fantastic so far. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm like reading it with my eyes, but I bet it's good with your ears Oh, God, as well. I'm like four hours into it, and I'm just like, I can't stop <laughs> listening to it. I'm like in between meetings listening to it. It's incredible. And the audio book is only 40 hours. What a value. Um... And it's this is I and mean, what is the book? Is it two thousand pages? It's is, huge. It's a it's a monster of a book. And it's I don't so think it's good. two thousand, but it's gigantic. It's well over a thousand pages. Yeah. But anyway, I, I'm listening. I like the unabridged stuff, and it's really an amazing look at journalism and the history of it. Uh, thank you at Audible underscore co on Twitter. Thank you Audible uh, for sponsoring the program and dealing with Paul's nonsense. Okay, <laughs> next up uh, in our Bing launch of the week. What is that noise you keep doing? Bing. The, like the search bing, engine. Bing, bing, bing. Are they sponsoring engine. it? They're sponsoring the launch of the Oh, movie. I see. You're yeah, not just bing. bing. Like that's nah, when you turn tick. the page in your not child's a book. Not a tick. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up, the information uh, letter from the editor, former Wall Street uh, reporter, Jessica Lesson, sometimes on the program, has launched a subscription uh, publication, another tech publication, just for the world needs, and it's only $39,000 a year. I'm sorry, $399 <laughs> a year for the newsletter. No ads for now. Uh, what do we think? Does anybody subscribe? I, I mean, look, I have That's a super expensive. I have a business that doesn't have a paywall for a reason, and Paul no longer has a business that has a paywall for a reason. It, it, like, look, what disturbed me about it, and she's super smart, and like, I, I could s- totally be wrong, but like, her, what concerned me was her tweet of. You know, hey, this is the cost of taking two. It's just the cost of taking two Ubers across San Francisco. And it's like, to me, she's trying to think of 
how do I say this value is worth it? That's not the problem. That's not the yeah. problem. People thought $10 mm -hmm. was nothing for not safe for work. It's yeah. getting people to pay a penny or nothing. Yeah. It yeah. isn't the amount of money. And the fact that she's like trying to rationalize and promote it based on the amount of money makes me think she doesn't understand the fundamental problem with paywalls. That's why but we never did the it's just the price of a cup of coffee thing. It's such bullshit. Everybody does on subscriptions. Oh, it's just the price of a cup of coffee. It, that doesn't matter. It's really it's easy getting, to buy it's a cup the time of it takes to take your credit card out too. It's thinking about it. Yeah, it's, it's acting on it right then. Yeah. It's the friction. It's too many points of friction. I actually, do, I actually. It's think, also expensive. No, I actually, like you guys, forty dollars a month for news about the technology people industry. People expensive. I'm drowning I in news about the technology industry. She I agree with like, that. Many that's a buttload of money. She doesn't need that many subscribers. How many? I agree. Like she, I agree with the she business insider. She needs less than we successful. She needs a thousand. She needs two thousand. She needs fewer than we had. She has four employees full time. Five, I think. Five? I so think she's I got, have five. That means she's got a six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar budget. Mm -hmm. I think the. They also have office space. They, you know. So it's maybe a million dollar budget a year. They can. Mm, I, don't I don't think it's that, but I think. I bet it is. Eight hundred. I don't have any problem with the economics of this. I think she can find enough people who will expense it. I think she gets. But I think the challenge, for the the key to that will be: is there anything in there that people can't get somewhere else, like Panda? It has to be really good. Good. to the site, and there's not. Nothing on there that I couldn't read on, and I'm not even going to say Pando or Things D, any other site at the moment. No, but I mean the journal. I mean, yeah, or well, the journal. Molly, you were at CNET. You guys did a lot of original reporting. Obviously, CNET had big budgets and a lot of journalists. It was very frustrating because the blogs, whether it was Engadget or TechCrunch right. or New York Times, not New York Times or um, you know whatever Buzzfeed's Business mm -hmm. Insiders World, would just take the article that took three days or three weeks yeah. to do and, so and summarize it. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what's going to happen to her so, scoops yeah, and so her stories? Yes, and here's here are the places where I agree with her. I agree with her that the that that the model for journalism could use some changing, and I agree that that people want. So I have been doing a lot of of talking and exploring the idea of crowdfunded content, particularly around podcasting, because I think it's the perfect medium for it. It's very intimate. People want to pay. People will pay you directly because they have lost trust in a lot of different sources, right? So people, so the idea of saying, we're gonna bring you extremely high quality reporting, true journalism with no ads and without some sort yeah. of you know, uh, sense of obligation to anybody like right. The Guardian, for example, um, is appealing. Right. And so I, I, she's, it makes sense to say, hey, I really wanna make a good product and I don't want it to be tainted by anything mm. and I hope that you will pay me for that. Mm. I think that it would actually be more appealing to me or it would make more sense to me if, A, her site demonstrated that every story she was going to publish was totally worth that outrageously mm -hmm. high cost, or B, she just did it as a straight donation model. Yeah. Mm. Because she only needs a couple thousand subscribers anyway. If she mm. has a couple thousand people donating, it's going to be a small pool Can anyway. There's something. Are I mean, there a thousand people who have done this? Oh, I mean, sure. like our membership if model, we actually good. have quite a lot of people. But that's the thing is we're not putting stuff behind a paywall so they know and love Pando and then they become members and they come to events and they do it to support yeah. us. And like, so like, yeah, I mean. She'll have no problem breaking even on this. It'll be a great lifestyle business. I think, It'll yeah, be fine. The I problem am. is, is it more than a lifestyle business? And like, do you have real impact on the world? Here's the thing. Journalists, I mean, Paul has so lived this with his team and going the last couple of weeks. Journalists want to influence and write for a business big audience right. and make a big difference. And when you're behind a paywall, you just can't do that well, also, in the same but way. But also, people don't... The other thing is, in well, terms of the they stories... Do they don't. I mean, influencing influencers is very powerful. Like, you look at some the, the some of the Hill publications that cost a couple thousand dollars a year and... I think like it's going to be hard to get the influencers. 57 people. I think she she's going to have a lot of people... What no one else is I think she's going to have a lot of people with expense <clears throat> accounts who can write it off. I don't know that it will be the influencers. Right. That, I mean, just money doesn't oh, yeah. give someone the I'm influencers. I'm not saying it won't. Well, you know? I'm not saying it necessarily will. No, there are the influencers, but if that's who her goal, a lot who do have influence, but this, well, Politico is a great yeah. example of this. They, but but the key with Politico is there is stuff in Politico that you have to have and that no one else has. And as yet, and it's really early for her, but as yet, I look at that site and I don't see anything I couldn't she read. You have on. to have research. Yeah. You've got yeah. to have a data right. product. Breaking news You've is not You've got to have a data no, product. Selling breaking, yeah. No one subscribes for news. They subscribe for people. And what we discovered would not say for what was people subscribed for Mark Ames, for John Dolan, for Lee Cowart, for whoever it was. They subscribed because they loved a person's take on things. If you're going to be, if she's going to make this work, she has to hire five people that everyone that have existing audiences and that are amazing. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, I mean, shit, I can Sullivan. only read yeah. so and so yeah. now. 
on this thing, of course I'm going to. It was like Helen Sir when he went to Sirius, right? Precisely. And yeah. she's Andrew still Sullivan. sort of selling it as like scoops or exclusive stories, which I'm sorry, but no. Right? And how did like, she you not come out of the gate with view. one scoop? This she she launched her estimated Well, she's got scoops, but they're just not very interesting. To make yeah. one million no, but she dollars. didn't come out with one big story. Like It was a right. weird launch because she didn't come out with like her big story at the beginning and everyone go, wow, we should take this. Come out with this note Can I just say one thing? But she has privatized the Facebook leaks. Yes, she has. Let me just say one thing. So I do agree with a lot of her saying that like, you know, I mean, you said the world doesn't need another tech publication. Like, I think the world needs a lot of good tech publications. I think there's a lot of lousy tech reporting out there. And I think she's very talented and her team yeah. is. Mm-hmm. So I agree with that. My issue is, I think she's taking a very simplistic view of the ad market. She's saying, in order to be ad supported, you have to go for mass page views and you have to dump stuff not down. That's, That's true. not true. That's we not charge true, 25 right? to $30 CPMs right. because we have a premium audience and do premium yeah. content. Yeah, I mean, see, we're that was we're less than we're less than two yeah. years in, and we've mm-hmm. proven this. And we've had an ad guy who's been with us for you know less than six months. Like she's just wrong, I think, in, in that view of the market. Yeah. And I think ads are a great way to make money in media. I mean, it's been the way they're, people make money a great for way a in, reason. In covering an industry, she she's yeah she's flat wrong about a specialist site like this can absolutely do it. Ads we couldn't because we were doing stuff right. about everything. We were doing. Dick jokes about you know about George Bush. I mean, no one's buying that. Right. Um, but but tech tech Except for me because I bought you. Well, yeah. You, well, yeah. Sarah's <laughs> buying that. But right. that's you know that should have been our model. Just I buy literally it bought that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen. Uh, third uh, up on the launch of the week, SpaceX commercial satellite launches. Bing. Bing. <laughs> Bing. Uh, uh, first launch of a Wait large commercial there, satellite man. for SpaX. It was kind of a big deal. It was the Falcon 9, I think. And uh, it's the only one company that launches U.S. military communication intelligence satellites. Big potential customer if SpaceX improves reliability. And here it goes off into space, the Falcon 9. This took a couple of days, too, because this was supposed to go off before Thanksgiving, and they kept having to um, tweak it. But it was really they interesting. Elon twice, kept yeah. updating people on like what they were working on. Like In real time, he was talking about what was wrong with each of the engines and whatnot. Yeah. But they got to space again. With a really big, 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 big satellite. Um, anybody have thoughts on uh, SpaceX and their incredible ascension? I love it. I, I mean, was, it's what, hard what to could be you cynical. say that's yeah, bad? It, right. I mean, I mean it, the New York Times would is, find something because it's Elon. But yeah. <laughs> no action time. crime there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is Operation Get Us Off This Rock in action. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is the start of it, right? This is, like, how our kids could literally just go live yeah, on Mars. Yeah, what is that? Or... There's, like, a still <laughs> image. Frozen on the studio image. monitor. This is a low space. There's a mugshot of Jason. I look, yeah, it's like, what am I being arrested for, yeah. officer? <laughs> the, uh, no, it, can... it's hard to be cynical about a guy go, going to space. put his own money Fine. Yeah. into yeah. doing you what know, the government could do. Alright, well, then we vote right. right now. Um, which is your launch of the week? A three hundred ninety nine dollar tech publication, <laughs> um, uh, a, a fake drone delivery service, yeah. or, or a well. man saving humanity <laughs> oh my with gosh, reusable rockets. See, I the New York Times think. would vote for Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I am yes. stuck. Yeah, Nick Nick Bilton is, Everybody is writing about how Jessica is the launch of the week. Just <laughs> take a note, producer Gina. If you, <laughs> I if think you put SpaceX up against like almost anybody, it's kind of <laughs> like you should do this every right. week, and then every other startup does this and. There's all space. I think, yeah. there's, I think there's a I think there's a real concern that Elon could end up monopolizing the space travel industry, and then when we want to colonize, we will have a serious problem because there won't be significant con- competition in this the yeah. privatized space industry. So this is the exact opposite Jessica. of vaporware. Yeah, like the exact opposite yeah. of the drones and vaporware. Yeah. yeah, I saw. I saw. I actually was lucky enough to see the Falcon 9 launch last year oh, cool. at NASA, and it just rocked my world. It's like incredible. I couldn't be less objective about this because I'm like. I when the rocket went up. I know. Yeah. No, I, have a qu- I have a question, a yeah. technical question that I, I don't know the answer to this. Are the people in there or is it unmanned? It's unmanned, unmanned currently, but okay. it's made to be manned. And in at SpaceX, they have the capsules. Okay. That's what uh, I, I, I don't think I'm actually the, out of school the, about the it. The Dragon capsule, which the goes drag- on the Falcon yeah. 9, mm-hmm. has uh, is made to be manned and it yeah. has windows in it already yep. that are currently oh, wow. covered over. And yeah. so they're basically just like, yeah, you know, all we have to do is like burp, burp, yeah. rip them down. 
Yeah. They're talking about manned missions to Mars in five to ten years. That's amazing. I will yeah, say that this is a cool way to deliver shit by an unmanned craft. Like this <laughs> has this has range. Absolutely. This is delivering packages to space. There are Martians getting a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey. The boy pulpit. That's amazing. And two pounds. Like this. Oh. <laughs> Bezos, this is how you deliver stuff with an unmanned vehicle. They, want, they should do tiny. Ones, they should do tiny ones of these that will deliver books to you, like a little tiny rocket. Yes. The Falcon Point Nine. A missile. I, would, I think I'm describing. I would Take, definitely pay forty dollars a month for little rockets to it deliver be goods to my house. Yeah, exactly. I, well, I want them to be electric. Wow. You know, I don't want them to consume fossil right. fuels. I want them um, to take off and land vertically. He's got that with so, the rest um, of them. So yeah. drones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a new Snapchat competitor no this cares. week. And, Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> there's a new Snapchat competitor, uh, and uh, Yelp has launched, uh, you can order food from your phone, or... Uh, Elon Musk went to Mars. What, what do people think? Which one is their front launch of the week? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can order a latte on the new Starbucks app delivered to you. I'd want to test it out before I decide if it's better than space. <laughs> you know, I don't right. think we should. I really like lattes. All right, yeah. 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 everybody vote on the Bing launch of the week. Bing, Bing. 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're all going for one, space. One, two, or three. Space. I, I space, think space, I can speak okay. for the dreams. Yeah. Space, space, yeah. congratulations. Mm, Clean, yeah. sweep. God, there. Elon's going to be like, yes. Yeah. Like, finally, I know, I know. You're sitting at home. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky, Elon. It's just one day. You got this. You got this. Yeah. It's like Jason psyching himself up for that ad earlier. Like, you got oh, this. You I can got do this. this. I can do this ad. I can get through this. <laughs> Paul throwing spitballs at me. Paul's going to be cool. Paul's going to be cool. Yeah. Elon's, Elon's made it. I feel like we we're go. in like senior like philosophy <laughs> class and we're just trying to get through it. And yeah. Paul's throwing spitballs at me as I'm reading my term. I do. I'm worried about Elon, though, because of that picture of him hanging with Bieber. There's a picture of him hanging with Bieber. Dude, he went to the Floyd, May- Floyd Mayweather fight mm-hmm. or something on yeah. a private plane with Bieber that, that's a and some other thing. people. That's and a I was like, thing. you know that's what? That's gotta be a Shervin that, thing. He got I know it's a Shervin thing. Yeah. It's a Shervin <laughs> thing. I know it's a Shervin thing. I, I, kn- like I agree. I don't like it. No, I know. <laughs> I know, Jason. I'm Shervin, I know, I know as well. Shervin is friends with I just Bieber like that Shervin's entire Twitter account. We've even got a word for it. Is Yeah, you've been Shervd. Um, I just <laughs> like the idea that You've been uh, sure His entire Instagram account is, is a series of people Who should not be in the same room Like What the <laughs> fuck is going on In this picture It's like a weird r- Where's Waldo You guys like, Where's Waldo I ha- Can I tell you the crazy Sherman story With Shrug Knight Probably not So I'm out in LA With a couple of entrepreneurs I'll leave them out of it um, Travis it, uh, I'm not then saying it's Travis No it's not. Is it a douchey story <laughs> No it, Then it's it, not Travis so Anyone breaking I'm, a hundy We're going to the club <laughs> So we're, I'm out, and yes, we go to the club. It's a club. Douchey story. It's slightly douchey. Here it comes. Yeah. So <laughs> you and your homies, you're going like, to the club. Yeah, go crib, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get some, like, just crib. Kanye thumping in the background? Yeah, that was story. Are you little rolling little deep like... at this point? No, I'm not rolling. Really. I'm, I'm rolling, like, very light. Very right, okay. but anyway, Did you make it rain? <laughs> Roll, you're rolling shallow. We're rolling some bottles. Okay. We're rolling here. Yes, of course. Right. No, so shit's getting real. Sherman doesn't mind if I tell a story, because it was on TMZ. So... I'm like, so I'm like, hey, sure. Slightly more. The, the tech industry is so douchey. cool. Sherman's wow. like, hey, you're out. I'm like, yeah, I'm out. Hey, meet me over here, whatever. Yeah, I'm so hanging with Henry sure Kissinger and Kanye. He's like, can you leave my name at the door? I say, of course I can leave your name at the door. Yeah. So he yeah. goes, oh, I'm coming with a, my, my friend's going to meet us there. Yeah. Can you leave his name at the door? Sure. I say, sure. Sure. What's his name? So he texts me back, Suge Knight. <laughs> so, this is how you end up dead. So Snoop Dogg <laughs> is playing. Right. It's like a little tiny club with Snoop Dogg playing. So I go to the front door. I'm like, hey, listen. I just my... want to point out again, this story's only slightly douchey. Just yeah. a tiny, <laughs> tiny bit. So I'm like, listen, my friend Shervin's coming. Guy, my friend at the door. I was like, yes, of course, Shervin. And then uh, he's bringing another friend with him. Uh, he goes, oh, what's this guy's name? I said, well, his name is Suge Knight. The guy goes, looks at me, like, and he, like, looks at me. Like, and he look, like, looks at me again, and he's not right. saying anything. He goes, you do know, like, Snoop Dogg's playing, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah. So anyway, it turns out Suge Knight and Snoop Dogg had not spoken yeah. in over a decade. Sherman just brought them together. Dude. So Suge comes, right. comes to our table, Snoop's at the table next to us, and Shots I'm just like, break out. this is not how I'm going to die. I got a kid. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm planning on leaving Snoop's when, Suge, when Suge gets, yeah. when, Suge, when Suge's in the club, that's when J. Cal leaves the club. I'm like, I gotta get out Can of the club. Can we just get that clip and play it on repeat? Please, please. 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 Actually, you know what? Shook's in the club. Jake out, 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 out of the club. club. I'm out. I, I want that on as a ringtone. So anyway, <laughs> that's a good ringtone. So like, like five minutes later, it's Shug. I mean, you know that's right. Shervin with Shug on one yeah. arm and Snoop on the other. Yeah. And they're like, 
all broing out. And I've seen that picture. Travis is also there, right? Yeah, he, he, might, he might be. Oh, he is. He's and in... there's like commenters on TMZ who are like, who are these dorky Who's guys that in the middle? Who's that dorky dweeb? <laughs> yeah, so great. <laughs> there's Travis like. So literally Shervin pickpocketing did a rap <laughs> feud. So, can we send him to the Middle East? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Really because, well but done. mainly, can we keep Bieber away from right, Elon? Because that's Bitcoin is going absolutely <laughs> yeah, like crazy. Bitcoin, the rise and fall. Uh, obviously, went up to fourteen hundred dollars. It doubled, and uh, Alan Greenspan calls it a bubble. Merrill Lynch came out and said it's got the potential to become a real major means for payment uh, for e-commerce and a serious competitor to money transfers. Then China said, "Oh, that's great that your guys are buying all this Bitcoin. It's illegal in China, or something to that effect. Like the banks should not be trafficking. It's just in banks. Bank. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of like saying it's banned." Now, they said you can use it for a private trade, which is basically what it is now. Yeah. yeah. Right, but they don't want banks, which means that how do you get your money in and out of it? Private trade. Anyway, what what do you think, Molly? Is this the end of Bitcoin? Is this like, what 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 do you wish? Your... <laughs> which part would be the end of Bitcoin? Yeah, it's a bit of a leap. The part where well, Merrill Lynch was I mean, like, if... "Dang, I think we could make some money on this." <laughs> yeah, yeah but I mean, that's the I'm... end of Bitcoin. Well, you have like, it, we're. I think that Bitcoin, regardless of what happens with Bitcoin, I think that cryptocurrency is a super powerful concept that is unquestionably here to stay and will probably be issued at some point by a government where where it may, you know, it may retain some elements of the decentralization that people like about Bitcoin. Maybe it'll still be mined elsewhere, there will, you know, but it will be backed. Like a backed cryptocurrency has a ton of power as something that is more secure, more traceable, more easily, yeah. you know, passed back and forth by the machines. But I mean, just machines. look at, I, I think you're right, but I mean, if you look at the volatility today, it was trading at 1400 last week. Mm-hmm. It's at, it was at 800 today. And but right now it's at 937. It's tulips. Like the, the, yeah. the former head of the yeah. Dutch bank called it the, like the tulip craze and of the, the 1600s the and he knows. About but I think it's even yeah. more so because like tulips were at least, you know, somewhat based on something real. You got I mean, the he's actually yeah. like, yeah, like you, Henry, I, 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 Henry you get the tulip. No, 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 no. there's a bowl. Did you like, know though? Henry no, Blodgett the was tulip, the tulip market, I don't know why I know this, but it actually created the concept of futures. So people did end up starting to no, trade palaces yeah, no, on I, the, the I know. And like most of, the of them like were not even in the ground when they were buying and selling them. Yeah. But um but, but the, there were tulips. There were right, actual tulips. Right. There was actually something there. I mean and people Blodgett, knew where they Blodgett came from. did this really great spiel at our Panda Monthly last month where he was basically saying, like, you know, no judgment, but like this is the perfect bubble. It is the perfect asset yeah. bubble. Because we don't know if it's a tenth of gold, we don't know if it's ten X gold, we don't know if it's fifty percent right. gold. Like, and also there's, it's all there's literally nothing vapor. to base yeah, there's it nothing on. There. Yeah. Right. And like it's tulips, there. at least had something that had been like inflated, and right, like so it went kind of crazy. Now, Even if they didn't like grow as pretty as they were yeah. supposed to, it was still a damn power. Bitcoin right. is gone. Whereas Bitcoin like five, will be gone. five years from now, Bitcoin is Bitcoin is fucked. But but cryptocurrency, I think Molly's right. Cryptocurrencies are here to stay, but I think Bitcoin is. So there'll be another type. I don't of know. Week. I'm not convinced. I just think, what do you think? Oh, I think Bitcoin will be around. Five years I think from now, Bitcoin, Bitcoin will be around. Is, oh, oh, and what price? Oh, I see. Low. I, that's what I mean. I just, I, I'm sure Bitcoin will be around. I'm not saying it'll go away, but I don't think it'll be the. Mm. It's not going to keep going up and up and up because it, it, the volatility is too much. And I don't know. I don't. What, I don't. Trust I think. It. I think there's so much instability in a lot of the rest of the world, and Bitcoin is a real solution for other fucked up foreign currencies. Yeah. I mean, I think it's more of a global play than it even is a domestic play. And so I think it'll continue to go up. I don't know that it, but it's like, I don't know it's a 10th of gold or a 50th of gold. I mean, that's where I'm just like, no one knows. So this is where I no think you're right. I think, it's, still, I think it's still around and I think it's worth more than it is now, but like, I don't own it. It's not where I'm like putting my kids college education. I think so I think the concept, but the fact that Merrill Lynch <laughs> is now talking about it as yeah. real, I think, says that some bank is going to back a cryptocurrency right. at some that, point. And, that and that's going to be agree. very I don't think powerful. cryptocurrency is going away. I don't think that's a fad. But I do think Bitcoin will will prove to have been a nice test of this. People and I think also will say come a lot of things. I mean, remember when IBM was holding press conferences in Second Life? Like, I, yeah. I don't put a ton of stock in Merrill Lynch saying that, but I do think. There just are so many people who who want something that's like a general ledger for the internet, where yep. you don't have to have names associated with it, where no country is controlling it. I just think it's too powerful of an idea oh, that yeah. a lot of people, both like ne'er do wells and really good people, and people who are living in unfair regimes, like yep. all really want. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think how we get from here to that being something that's predictable and we understand is going to be like. A wild roller coaster, but yeah. like I don't even think it'll. I mean, I think Bitcoin itself—it's it has a huge brand. 
You know, Maybe. why would it go away and something else is? I think mean, the exchanges and the players will change. I but. think, yeah. I mean, I think it would only change if like a government issued a backed cryptocurrency. Otherwise, I think Bitcoin will be the cryptocurrency of choice because it because it exists and it is algorithmically secure. So even though it's volatile now, like everything's volatile when it first starts out, it is based on air. Like, sure, okay, if the zombies come. Bitcoin goes away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Until then, that's the first but thing until then, do is get rid of Bitcoin. So <laughs> yeah. Zombies. Like Bitcoin's then brains. Yeah. Power goes out. <laughs> power goes out. Bitcoin's over. We all understand yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like this isn't like can we just hand each other gold, pieces but, of paper with our hash on it? Like here's my Bitcoin. <laughs> but it is like it's technologically secure. So as long as the technology exists, like it's still very powerful. Oh, it does have a serial number. Yeah. Oh, I see how money works. And honestly, like, doesn't Bitcoin feel almost as real as money these days? Like with the ETFs and whatnot. Like it's I don't know. To me, it's you know, to me, the distinction, and I understand that to an economist, the distinction between a currency and Bitcoin is very, very extreme. Mm-hmm. But to me, like, I look at the way Wall Street trades money and then the way that Bitcoin is, yeah. and I'm like, I don't know. I don't see a significant difference, really. Yeah, I don't think there's that technical difference. It's just the idea that nobody's behind it or we don't know who's right. behind it. That's, yeah. That, to me, is the biggest flaw is that we just, we talk about, well, it's, you know, it's algorithmically secure. It's all this. We we know so little about it. We know so little about it. Yeah, but no, but it's completely accessible. They're all you need to do is buy a machine with a bunch of horsepower, and then you own it. You're mining it. Like the decentralized. At this point, you need to buy a a lot of machines with a lot of horsepower. Oh yeah. You don't. It's not like how long does it take to make one? At this point now, it's extremely non-trivial. You need to basically be Amazon at this point to be mining them. I mean, it's ridiculous. It used to be much easier, but this is the whole thing. The whole the whole thing. It's been around so little time that we just don't know what this looks like in five years, and we don't know how stable it is. And by the way, we still don't fucking know who made it. That's the thing that I... I have a conspiracy theory. I think there is a 10% chance Mm -hmm. that this thing was seeded out there by By the the U.S. government, the CIA, as a way to infiltrate other dictatorships, other places where... The dollar is being, co- you know, counterfeited, et cetera, mm-hmm. and to be able to track stuff. The government couldn't make <clears throat> Obamacare's website work, and you think they built? I'm, I'm not talking about totally the government. I'm talking about government. the CIA. <laughs> oh, yes. this is the shadow government. Yeah. I'm talking about the CIA. The, the CIA is the Obama. It's a false flag. Yeah. False flag. flag. You look more like <laughs> Alex Jones every time. It's like all right, Paul. false flag. Seventy seventy six one. I don't know. Oh, I'm clear kinda, that the school I'm, shooting. I'm actually. Was. I'm with you. You do. Yeah, I think that right. is. I think that is maybe even a better than ten percent possible. I know that the federal government is extremely. Well, people say give someone a microphone and an internet connection, and they well, always the trend network. towards Alex Jones. Go on, false flag. <laughs> what what is it now? Yeah. They're trying to get the guns away from yeah. us. And I got with, with this. Am I Piers Morgan in this scenario? You're gonna start exactly. yelling at me. <laughs> you you, you want to take our guns? You don't even come from this country. Yeah. You were, you were under investigation for phone hacking. Jesus. They go into this play every time. They're like, <laughs> really? you guys reenact this Alex drama. Jones. It's no. I'm so here. glad no. I'm here for this. Yeah. No. All right. No. I don't feel like I've gotten enough Joe Pesci or Walter Winchell. <laughs> <laughs> you feel kind of ripped yeah. off. I do. Exactly. I do. Um, All right. So, yeah. But I mean, if you look at the tour network, the tour network, they said the CIA, FBI, everybody had like infiltrated into the anonymous tour network. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's how they were catching people. Like, they set up the tour routers. Yeah, well, it now, turns, out, it turns, it turns out the real way they've caught everyone is that a lot of the people using it were quite dumb. Like the guy behind Silk Road and whatever else. It's like, yeah, actually, the, you don't need to infiltrate them when the people involved are quite as dumb as they are in some cases. Like, people put too much trust in this stuff, and they're like, oh, the tour network is so secure, I'm going to sell drugs on the tour network. What, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, and I'll use the same email address as I used when I registered on whatever the hell. Yeah, that's what happened, right? The guy yeah. who got caught on Silk Road used the same mm-hmm. email? Yeah, he used an email on, on like, a hacker forum when he was asking for help building a secret drug dealing website. And he's like, oh, <laughs> shit, I shouldn't use my real email address. I'll just delete it after saving it and put something else in. And so they were able to just go back to the beginning and go, oh, look, the guy who calls himself this called himself that. It's this guy. And there was him. a whole other conspiracy theory that that actual bus never happened and that it was right. a, that, that this guy never actually existed and that it, that itself was a false flag and that the, the, the page false that flag. they put it, like the false page flag. that they put up after shutting down Silk Road didn't actually match the DOJ page that they usually wow, put up. Wow, this conspiracy theory. Plus, you've never seen this guy again. It's not like there was ever a perp walk or, you know, I mean. Yeah, where is that just, guy? He's, he's in, in jail he's somewhere. He's in jail writing letters from jail. He's, we don't see a lot of people who go to jail. That's why it's you jail. You usually see a perp walk or something. Like, this 
this guy, like, you've never, you, he hasn't been heard of again. You don't normally see And he put a hit down on people thing. for Bitcoin. This isn't Bonfire of the Vanities. Like, we don't normally, like, you know, arrest a guy and, like, march him out in front of the press. That doesn't happen for every criminal. <clears throat> this guy was taken away. He's and not in, just every criminal. He was running, he's like, running the Guantanamo. secret underground. We know yeah, yeah. Like, there's a, it's, there's it's, a, I'm not saying I buy this, by the way. It's not a photogenic story. It's not like, you know, Martha Stewart going off. Yes, it is. Because he's, like, a 20-something, like, hipster living in the for and all then of put a us hit out in this and room, put yes, a hit out this people? is amazing. For like someone watching the NBC Nightly News, watching oh, this guy oh, do a perp walk, set up is not like is not watching Martha Stewart do a perp uh, walk, whatever, and just got burned. Set up a network, website, the Twitter where you movie, or the Silk Road movie. Which one we? As long as all of us in this room agree with that, but like there's so much exposition to saying why this is a holy shit story. That is not how news networks and perp walks Somebody please confirm, Gina. I don't know. Can we just confirm that there is an inmate record for this guy and a trial date is being set? He hasn't disappeared. He hasn't like. We don't know where he is. Yes, is we there? do. We know precisely where he is. We do know. We know that there's a trial date. No, where is is it? there's a trial date being set. There is. We know. We know where he's being kept. We know. We do. He's not disappeared off the. <laughs> <laughs> Raising your Maybe. eyes isn't an argument. Like, oh no, it's a really good argument. She looks like the dramatic <laughs> hedgehog. It works every time. I, can't resist no. it. I know. I feel like, I know. I know. Like, it works every time. Like, oh really? You can tell she has kids. Oh really? You wouldn't doubt yeah. that. You're right. You're what right. It says, it says more about it them. It says more, it about, them. Yeah. more yeah. about that person. <laughs> I know. If they did. I know. myself am run. I was built by the CIA <laughs> in order to infiltrate America. I was the last that person that did. That accent's a little phony. Yeah. Well, it, it keeps shifting. Pretty bad. You know, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just saying. Pretty false bad. Flag. 1776, false will flag. 1776 will commence again. <laughs> All right. Listen. This has been an amazing episode. Oh yeah. Thank you so much to Paul Carr for destroying everything. Do we still have to say I've, Bing? Everything I've destroyed. Thank you for destroying everything I've built up for the last four years of the show. You're welcome again. Uh, I would like to point out, you've never invited Paul on the show. He just comes with me. Yeah. No, it's your sidekick. <laughs> right yeah. You're Batman. You're At Robin. some yeah. point, you're gonna, we're going to get a note from your producer. Please don't bring Paul this time. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's really up to the audience. I this would is like, going to get a bunch of people right, watching this show. Mandrill is going to get more <laughs> traffic than it they're gonna do great. had when it was Mandrill. <laughs> Listen, all I have to say to my audience is, please vote on Twitter. If Paul should be allowed back on the show, that's a great. Everybody, it's a great vote. If if more than fifty percent of the people, CIA is going to fix the vote, he's Paul Carr, <laughs> two R's on Twitter, and just say, please, Jason, no more at what Paul does Carr. That note please, mean? Jason. Sarah, you know why much crosstalk. Sarah, you know why <laughs> much crosstalk. <laughs> is that a haiku? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> is it a subliminal implant? Sarah, that? you know why. <laughs> All right, listen. Um. Much this has been an amazing talk. episode. Thanks to our friends uh, Audible and Mandrill and Bing for sponsoring the program. <laughs> Thanks to Paul Carr for he. <laughs> He's just actually hiding from me now. Right, I'm just going to put the paper up and then I won't look at him and then I won't laugh. The Valley, San Francisco? No, I, I love Vegas. I love Vegas. I'll be spending <clears throat> more time here, of course, especially he now. He'll probably I know move here eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Batman. Um, we'll see. I, I, I still love Vegas. I was in it's Vegas like, before I did the company. I'll be in Vegas long after like I did the company. Cagney and Lacey. I like that. That's so, a, to, so to speak. That's like, I'm Jimmy Cagney and she's Sarah Lacey. That'd be a hell of a show. <laughs> you wouldn't be bad. No, Cagney and Lacey was Travis, a female cop. It rat. was a female cop show. No, I saw it. I see. It was yeah. No, it, it was, it was great. It Sharon Glass and the other the other chick. No, it was an amazing show. It was, <laughs> wasn't it? Listen, don't mess with Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> was I was I wrong? Was it not Sharon Glass? One, All right, is and Sharon Glass Cagney or I got Lacey? Nothing. Yes, <laughs> nothing. They swapped every episode. They Thanks to Molly Wood for putting up with Paul Carr and for being on the program again. Everybody follow Molly Wood. Pleasure. Molly Wood. Solution. Um, so what's the story, Molly? Are you going to go back into podcasting? You going to do journalism? Are you going to work for the information? What's the story? I am weighing false some flag? options. False flag? Glenn, Glenn Greenwald? I am a false flag. <laughs> Don't you want me to um, I am in discussion. Oh, good. <laughs> She's being heavily courted by many, I'm many outlets. I'm being a little courted. Yeah, it's really distracting. My plan, though, currently is not to have a job because it turns out it's super fun. Super fun not having a job? Yeah. She's like, just discovered that. You're it's been awesome. You're 14. I've been baking. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your kid to school. Yeah, all the good stuff. I'll have news soon. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, Sarah Lacey, of course. Uh, Sarah Kuda on Twitter and Pandora Daily rocking it. Congratulations on the um, huge uh, acquisition of Not Safe for Work. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Better you than me. Um, <laughs> all right, I think that's it. Thank you, Bing. And um, Bing, thanks, Bing. producer Gina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I do a quick plug? Yeah, plug. It says anybody. we can do a plug. Yeah, um, plug. So right when we leave here, Paul and I are going to meet with our illustrators and art directors on the first Pando Quarterly print edition. I'm sorry, edition. did you say 
plural yeah. illustrators. You With have two, two illustrators. Yeah, they got one part of the acquisition. They got Brad yep. Jonas. And two illustrators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it's and, not a bubble. <laughs> oh, yes, we have an illustrator bubble, because two, <laughs> two of them are working a on a 96-page mm. magazine. You have two illustrators. Wait, you're doing a quarterly magazine? Correct. Yep. That's what's happening to Not Safe for Work yeah. Print. Yeah, right. we're turning it from a monthly to a quarterly, and there's so much amazing stuff. Like, in this issue, the one we're doing in December, there's... Um, uh, Matt Bors, a Pulitzer finalist uh, cartoonist, has commissioned all of these like graphic novel journalism comics about journalism. D- uh, comics journalism, like about the tech world and sharing it's economy and all stuff. stuff. It's going to be phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really phenomenal. We were going to do it. It was some of it was started at Not Safe for Work, but when we when we did the Pando deal, it's like we're going to make this big. It's going to be twice the size of any of the print stuff we did before. Really glossy and cool. It's going to be gorgeous. So wow. if anyone wants to mm. subscribe who's not a subscriber already, it's like what? Tugboatyards.com forward slash Pando is the address because we put it on Tugboat for now. So it's tugboatyards.com yeah. forward slash Pando. What is Pando. Tugboat Yards? It's an Andrew, Andrew Anchor's, Anchor's subscription site thing. It's like um, a it's like a Kickstarter, but anyone can do it. For and media. it's for subscriptions is and it, media. So tugboatyards.com forward slash Pando. Let me pull this up here. You I never heard up. of this. Yeah. It's new. It's brand new. So you sign up for your quarterly thing there. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You can get just the one issue. Or you can get the subscription. It's everyone who's a not safe work subscriber gets it automatically. There it is. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, Professionalism. And we're gonna have um, a, a bunch of original features and sort of expanded stuff from the year. We're gonna do some like you know really cool like photography and clips from you know favorite quotes from Pano Monthly throughout the year. Like it's gonna be. I'm so excited about this print. Issue. Yeah, it's gonna be really. It's gonna be gorgeous. Good with our two two illustrators. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on This Week in Startups. Bing!